We're going to today talk about 10 things the SBA has gotten woefully wrong in the 22 months since this debacle. And um, we're going to outline 10 things. Trevor is going to stay calm. Today's going to be the Linda show um, because I don't even want to listen to me on last week's show. I was ranting like a lunatic. A lunatic. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I will be here as a loan officer slash underwriter to kind of get into the technical answers of questions that you folks are going to pose. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're, we're we going to script over here and Linda has the bullet points and we've got all kinds of cool stuff to share with you. So if you're joining us on the replay, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. Hello, Kathy Lee. As we muddle through the 10 things the SBA has gotten wrong about the COVID-19 EIDL program. So hey, let's Kathy kick Lee, it off. How is the audio? We turned the microphone down a little bit because last week's show, apparently we were blowing it up. So if you can give us that feedback, it'd be very helpful. All right, so let's start with... And we're doing the show in our office today. We are. We're doing the show in the office. So now this isn't... Th these 10 things are not necessarily in any one order. They're not weighted by the gravity of the, you know... The gravity. The egregiousness of the SBA's process. No. Uh, but let's talk Basically, about... Basically, I was in the shower, and I came up with uh, <laughs> the starting of the list of all the stuff that really... Thanks, Kathy Lee, you rock. Um all the stuff that really ticks me off uh -huh. about the Small Business Administration uh, at, at every aspect of the COVID-19 EIDL aspect. Poor Kathy Lee is a really good example of uh -huh. the shit show that SBA puts decent, hardworking American small business owners like Kathy Lee through. And tax-paying small and tax business about American you owners. Know, you know what we, we forget frequently, Lynn? I mean, it's your money. Why is the SBA? Not just that. You're not asking for a handout. Yeah, it's this is a loan. This isn't you got to pay money. It back with yeah. interest over so, thirty years. So I'm not really clear Hi, Peter. how the SBA can't get it right in almost two years. So we're first. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So why they can't? Let's start with number one. Okay, there's no safeguards against <laughs> fraud in an original in the original application. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait. I have a fan. Did I? Oh, you have a fan. Uh, and his name is Peter. Peter Akbari. Can you put Peter's comment up? You were perfect last week. But Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I agree with you, Peter. Um, we we had someone reach out to us from a veterans group where they were in Virginia or West Virginia, Maryland or something, mm -hmm. and they're working with the Senate to pass some legislation to make the SBA more transparent. The EIDL, it's streamlining the EIDL process. It's like, oh yeah, and it's over and it's two years and now, like- And they, this, this- And why does it have to be, like, why, it's so broken that that's what they're trying to pass a new bill to streamline this program because it's so broken. Well, as, okay. you, as you're gonna see from our list about what's broken, we, we have ideas on what takes to fix it. It, it is not complicated. Okay. But, but Peter's right, because when, when Linda came to me with this proposal, because these people wanted our, our input for um, this legislation, and I said, I have no bandwidth for it. I'm exhausted. I'm overwhelmed. Uh -huh. I'm done with the SBA. In fact, they should be passing a law to dissolve the SBA. Peter. Yes. Yes. So, Peter, I agree with you. You know, yes. just it, it, and and you know, there's Hello, Adam. Hi, Adam. Um, I don't know if you're aware, Linda, but there is a proposal floating out there from the Small Business Administration that's making its way through Congress. The proposal is that going forward, small business loans, which currently the way it works is you're a small business and you go to a bank or you go to an SBA approved direct lender, mm -hmm. and that lender lends you their money under the auspices of the SBA program, which means basically the bank has an internal underwriter, but there's also a backup secondary underwriter at the Small Business Administration who has to agree mm -hmm. with the bank's underwriter. Yeah. Well, this proposal seeks to eliminate the bank from that process and that the Small Business Administration will be the direct lender on certain, if not all, SBA programs. And American Bankers Association and a lot of other folks are raising cane about that, saying, oh, hell to the no. Mm -hmm. Between the fraud that SBA allowed to happen, which is actually our first topic today. I, this is going to be a long show if we can't even get 
through the first thing. Between the fraud and the complete incompetence, which is the other nine points that we're going to discuss today, how can the SBA even think that they could take on the role as a direct lender for regular SBA loans? The, in fact, as bad as the banks are, they're a buffer, aren't they? Yeah. Like in our experiences of closing loans, our bankers actually made the deals happen. They made the deals happen, and though the the SBA continued, they delayed the process and they complicated it with additional requirements and second guessing. They papered us and to death. They papered to death. You so. know, you'd send in a document, and then two, three weeks pass, and then they come back and go, "We want another thing." And, and you know, I would I would yell and scream at my desk and I say to Linda, <sighs> "Don't they look at the entire file in one shot? Like, what's the deal?" And they don't, and that. It's the same thing with the EIDL program. So we knew how bad the SBA was before COVID happened. Okay, so okay. item number one, tell them what they've won, Linda Ray. No safeguards against fraud in the original application. Uh, they have now, as a result of their oversights from the beginning of when the, you know, back in March of 2020, um, they're now treating legitimate businesses as if they're committing fraud because they were duped or the SBA was duped early on. So now the small, the legitimate small business owners have been paying the price with having to wait nine months for an approval. Like what, you know, and, and how is it that they can't approve the loan? I mean, no one's talking about, is it really taking that long to get through approving a file because right, because they're, they've touched the file, and then it sat and languished. And so, you know, because they're overdoing it and papering everyone to death because of the fraud, they now can't get through their own process on a streamlined basis. So, well, we're going to come back to that because that's a little later. You kind of jumped. Did it. I? You jumped. A Why? Okay. So what? But the, the the initial under Carranza, who was the administrator of SBA when COVID first happened. James Rivera, who's been there, I think, since the Renaissance period in Europe when Da Vinci was <laughs> painting. Uh, Rivera was there. Rivera's still there. Uh, these people who were running it were tasked by the Congress of the United States to come up with this, adapt this emergency program to get money into your hands in the small business community. And all they needed to do, it is so simple, to protect against fraud is require a photo ID and a tax return. Right. It's not complicated. Right. And then they then implement the authentication process with regard to the ID and the email and verifying, you know. And it on. wasn't like that. For those of you who applied back then, you know, it was I mean, and we know that a lot of people did it on their smartphones. Mm. You know, I did them all on, on my computer. We did 48 applications initially. And all it was was like a three or four page question and answer. And there was no documents required. God, is hell in, here now? in fact, even today, the SBA EIDL application is pretty much the same thing. It's it's four pages. There's more questions. Hi, Erica. There's more questions. There's a little more detail. But there's no requirement at application time that you as an applicant should submit a piece of identification and a tax return. Okay. You know? Number two. <clears throat> Failure to train staff on the fundamentals of, of business, business documents. documents. I'm going to leave this one with you because you have heard me ranting and raving about this. Hey, Kaz. Um, yeah. Well, the problem is, and we talk about this in our videos a lot, and I respond to a lot of people saying they don't know how to read forms and they don't know how to do math. They don't know how to read tax returns and uh, tax transcripts to know what numbers indicate the actual income that would be able to then calculate gross revenue minus COGS is equals gross profit times two, 24 months working capital. And they don't know how to read that to do the math. We've had an episode uh, just oh. by way of one example. Go ahead. Yeah. And also the, um, they don't, if you're going to have to verify that your business is legitimate, why, why are you kicking no, under? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm touching oh. you because I like touching you. <laughs> um, so, and then, so then to verify that the business is a legitimate business, there are various documents that a business owner can furnish 
that justifies their existence, i.e. Uh, an EIN letter, the SS4, which is proof from the IRS that you incorporated and you got an EIN or, employer. Or created an LLC. Or created an LLC. And you got a federal and, employee identif employer identification number or articles of formation, um, tax registration document with your local municipality to pay sales taxes. You right. collect from sales. They don't, they don't, they don't. Is this where I, I This would up, be simple. But is this but where yes, I put up can the. You, can you put it up? All yeah. right, so now right. I'm going to put up so a banner. Before you put the banner up, this is one of the things that, SBA staff is, yes. is 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 mistrained. So on Monday, one of our clients who owns three businesses, he violated the terms of our contract and he called the SBA. Yes. Which is a violation. It leads to automatic cancellation if you're our client. The reason it's in place is because in our experience, including mine of speaking to SBA agents, they give people the wrong information all the time. And Monday was a perfect example. So the client calls SBA, he gets a customer service rep on the phone who says to him after looking at the file, says, well, your 4506T is wrong because it has you down as a sole member of your LLC, when in fact it should have the title of managing member. Now, first of all, the last part of that that's wrong is that, as we see when we talk about 4506T in a minute, the IRS doesn't give a shit what says on the title. All the IRS cares about is what's at the top of it, that it exactly matches your tax return. Right. So, okay. So it doesn't care title. But here's the thing. I went into the client's file, and I looked at the LLC paperwork. I looked at the 2019 tax return. Because, you know, we prepared these forms for the client, and he submitted them to the SBA. Of course, my forms are correct, and he is the sole member of right. the LLC. And here it is. And, you know, yesterday I was underwriting a different file, and I came across this SS4, which clearly shows an LLC with a sole member on IRS letterhead. So, again, SBA administration fails to train their staff on the basics of, does an LLC have a sole member, managing member? Members? Uh -huh. Is it a president? You know, is it an owner? The, the, Do these titles even matter? The, the thing is, so there's there's different temperaments <laughs> of these SBA reps. Some of them, and we've, I think you've encountered. Oh, you, wanna, you wanna hit that bullet point right there, based on temperaments, right there. Shoot first, ask questions later. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't even Go know. Go back to you what you're saying about temperaments. Okay, so see how it links. So there, so now <clears throat> Trevor handles all of the interactions with SBA when he's when they're asking for stuff or he has to call and talk to a, the loan officer who's on, you know, or whatever. And there's a few different temperaments. You have the um, the loan officer that was an actual loan officer at some point in her yeah. uh, their career. Yeah. Okay. So she's really he he she a mortgage loan officer the, she was. Yeah. Previously. They're working to they're working the file to get it approved and not just checking the boxes off, but trying to understand the paperwork. So that's okay? one person. That's one person. And that's one temperament. Then there is the there's uh, loan reps and there's attorneys. And loan specialists. And loan specialists. And they have their part where they're fulfilling whatever requirement they're in charge of, and they're just checking off the boxes. And they don't listen, they don't hear, they don't they, they don't, don't know, they don't read. They just have to check the box. They just do their work, and that's it. There's no and outside the lines. There's no ambition. There's when no they hit something that confuses them, either through their inexperience, lack of knowledge, lack of training, or just being a complete idiot who doesn't understand basics about it. But hey, yeah. Cobina. Um, that's where shoot first, ask questions. Like, they just go, oh, this is a problem, and they decline the file. Yes, yes. So, or they make stupid statements. But now, the third temperament that we've encountered, and again, Trevor on the front line doing this, is the asshole who thinks they're God and that they have the power and the authority, and they're gatekeeping and papering to death, and they're inflexible, and they're rude, and they're uh, obstinate yeah. and arrogant. And that's perfect, because that describes the conversation that our client had with this loan officer. Confusing a DBA with an LLC. Do you remember what she said to him? Do you remember? First of all, she was very mean. Yes. She was rude to him. And this is a client, by the way, who is one of the gentlest spirits. You gotta, he's, a, he's an Air Force veteran. And he's a really yes. quiet, humble, um, polite, gentle person. And this loan officer was rude. And she said, sir, the SBA, this moment, does not lend money to businesses that are defunct. Mm -hmm. Your DBA is defunct. 
Mm-hmm. It has been closed down, and we will not lend you money. And he kept saying, but, 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 but it, it, it's an LLC that is still active. <laughs> I made $300,000 in 2020. But actually, this I closed example, the DBA. This b- example is the reason why we instituted a clause that you cannot talk to the SBA anymore because they declined the file before, before there was a chance to to reason with this person. Yeah. Had I so. spoke, it was literally that incident that caused us to add a new clause to our contract for new clients saying you, you're not allowed to talk to the SBA. Because as I said to my client, had you not spoken to that loan, had I spoken, I've had these conversations with people with this power trip stupidity for three decades yeah. in the mortgage industry. I've had these arguments and conversations with underwriters. And so, and I would have said to her, I'm sorry, I think you're confusing. Yes. LLC with DBA. And she would have, I promise you, she would have said, well, we will never oh, know right. because, and that was also right. like we'll never know. eight months ago. No, we know now. because I've had these conversations with other law officers and they go, oh. oh, but this is the other reason why we try to vehemently express and I hear it all the time. I see the comments. I get emails and people, they say, but when I called, stop calling. Yeah, stop calling. They don't know. They don't give you correct The people guidance. who are call- that you, when you call them and, and you're talking to them, they don't know anything about your file, number one. And then they have to go into the system, into your, into your uh, account, which is an probably like ours we have a crm so we have our own little portal of everything about a client and all the activity scrolling and scrolling and has everything documented with every touch every expert uh anticipate tell them about interaction tell them about the document i was looking for yesterday in the crm so linda was working in the office with me she was sitting in her big comfy leather chair and i was at my desk and i needed to find a client's cell phone number it was not it was not properly Woo-hoo! saved in the CRM. So I'm looking for our questionnaire, which has the client's number. And I'm scrolling through the right side. Which is attachments. Right. Right. So Tell them how document. long it took me to find it. I mean, it was like 10 minutes, probably easily. 10 minutes with something. So that's why. And they, we're the advocate but for that, the client. So we're going to spend that extra time. That's why when you call them, they have to document it, which is more times that they have to scroll. Uh, you know, it's more they have to try to sift through with someone who doesn't know anything about you in your file. So that's why stop calling them. If there's anything going on, they will email you because they will need something and they will get in touch with you. Yeah. So okay. and, and, or or it'll be on the portal request from docs. But you know the thing is Can we get to number three? Before we do, just last comment on this uh you know shoot first ask questions later. The the the, the opposite of this is true in sense of Avoid the questions so I don't get shot. And that's a bad customer service representative attitude. Yeah. Um, we just had lunch before coming over here, and Linda said to the server, so what about the, the what was it called? The, the I am slaw sandwich. The I am cold slaw. pork and slaw cold because pork. it's winter, and, and I'm she just loves cold packing on the pack. I had the uh, the cheeseburger called the Dude Abides, yeah. which is a pretty good cheeseburger. But, but she asked the server, so how is it? And the server did what most customer service reps never do. She told the truth. Yeah. She said, well, actually, I wouldn't know I don't because eat I meat. don't eat meat. It's a Which is pretty barbecue cool. She works in a barbecue place. restaurant. <laughs> but she was honest. Easy, and this is the easy. problem. We don't know how hot this mic is. I do because I actually tested it before oh, okay. the show. And Kathy Lee said it's good. All right. So, I, so when you call the SBA and you speak to these folks, they don't want you screaming at them. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to make shit up. Yeah, to get you off the phone. They're going to, in their incompetent, poorly trained, lack of knowledge way, look at a document, make a wrong interpretation, Uh and tell you that simply so it sounds like you got some satisfaction on the call. And you're all like, oh, wow, thank you. Uh, This guy in the email on Monday, he said, the SBA rep was very helpful. No, she wasn't. She was an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Number three, the famous, everyone's favorite subject. Here we go. I just don't understand how this form is so how it's it's it it confuses and confounds everybody. The famous 4506T. T for trouble, folks. Ooh, I T like that. T for trouble. Back um, in the day it had a C after 4506C when I first started filling them out way back in 1996. Well, I think now it's a T because it's caused so much trauma. 
Well, the IRS. With everybody. No, no, it's called T because it's an internal designation from the Internal Revenue Service. They have different types of 4506 okay. forms. All right, and, and, and let's move on. The reason why this form has everyone confounded, including the SBA and especially the SBA, because the SBA, all of a sudden, they think they're working for the IRS. They think that their job is they have dual title, that they are also the IRS and they have to gatekeep for the IRS, which I don't think that's in their job description. It's not. OK, so they're really unclear as to these one page instructions on how to fill out this one page form. And um, after 22 months, they're still misdirecting people on how to complete it. And they are misfiling it they're they're completing it incorrectly we see them when it's in the portal and people have to sign it it's wrong and you know trevor's been doing this for 26 years with the form and you've trained people on the form so we're not clear on how the sba doesn't still know how to read the form or fill the form tell, out. tell the crowd how long it took me to train our three people 10 minutes 10, each. 10 minutes each 10 minutes. and these are people all three of them who have zero experience mm -hmm. with tax returns, with business documents, with loan. They have no experience at all. One of these staff members, her job prior was she, she had a master's degree in fine arts. The other person is a second year college student majoring in business. And the third person uh, is Lorraine, who has no real business experience. Trevor's ex-wife. My ex-wife. What? Yeah. Yes. And it took me 10 Days minutes. Days of our lives. Well, it was the sands of time. <laughs> it took me 10 minutes to train each of them on how a 4506 Wait, tell the audience, when we fill out a 4506 correctly. I know, we talked about this last previous week. Address. I already, we, oh, we, we talked about it last right. week. You could go on the replay. I did the timestamps. You can find it easily. But here we are. We're 22 months and in. And they don't know how to do it. And the small business. We are going to have Q&A for folks who are here. And now we're only on three. And you're wondering, well, when can I ask a question? All right, let's keep moving. And let's move we do, faster. Why don't we get to number four? And then we can open it up for some questions. All right, number four. Inability to recognize, you know, okay, uh, the unique nature of this pandemic and how it fits into the the IDL program. Um, they are using rules from the, the days of the natural disasters and how they were lending money for natural disasters. Uh, this is not the same thing. A natural disaster is a finite period of time. The storm came, the storm destruct, destroyed, and then the storm passed. In minutes. In cases. minutes, sometimes <clears throat> not very long, maybe hours if it's a hurricane. Uh, it's minutes if it's a tornado, a fire, you know, all these things. So there's a finite period of time. We have gone through now two variants of this virus that has caused people to have to stay home and not go out, not buy stuff, not spend money, not go places. Chicago School District teachers refused to go back to work last right. week. Um, Broadway, we, we were in Manhattan the week before Christmas. We had tickets to a Broadway show. It was Day canceled. Before, canceled. Somebody was infected on the And on the, cast. the SBA is acting like this is not happening. They're acting like it's 22 months and that, you know, um, well, you know, this was March of 2020. And here we are two years two, later. Two key takeaways from this point. And by the way, it's, it's, I mean, everyone talks about what, when's it going to go back to normal? What's normal anymore? What's the new normal? Like, it. It's like this, we're going to live with this in our lifetime. It's sort of like I said to Trevor yesterday, you know, people have gotten, well, some of our clients have gotten COVID, so we have not heard back from them on things. In the, in the last couple of weeks. And, yeah. that, and, and we don't. We had it. We had it, but we actually don't know if we really had it. Uh, we had it. But, so, you know, when we went to the transfer station, which is where we have to bring our garbage, that's why our taxes are so low here. What? And what? Yeah. And no, and so the guy was like, oh, so it's like you had the flu. It's like that's what happened when influenza. And so anyway, it's not going away. All right. So I just want to touch on this. Two key points about the inability to recognize the unique nature of the pandemic. And we have said this on our oh, on these videos. Oh, are we still echoing? You're do I, echoing? Do I need to do ASMR again? <laughs> okay. Folks, if you could check in and tell us about teeth? our audio, how that is, we'd appreciate that feedback. Thanks, Clyde. Uh, I'm not sure why we're echoing. Um, Echo. I mean, we're in our office. It's not a soundproof space. Uh, but two takeaways from the inability to recognize the unique nature of the pandemic and adapt yeah. the esoteric rules 
um, such as how do you spend EIDL monies? Mm -hmm. You know, the SBA, who's used to lending EIDL money for a natural disaster, they have rules in the loan agreement that says you cannot use the money to expand the business yeah. or to pay back uh, shareholders for their investments or loans they've made to the company and things of that nature. And yet, with the longevity, 22 months now, of this pandemic, business owners are being told you cannot use the money to do that. But then how are they supposed to maintain the continuity of their business, which is the intention of the program? Because if they don't do some of these things, yeah. you know, like spend the money to do a different, like to buy a truck yeah, so they can get their restaurant food out there as a food truck because they can't open the restaurant, right? right. This is in 2020. Things like that. SBS says, no, 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 you can't. Can't use it to buy fixed assets. That's So there's that failure. Well, the other thing the too second is, is about credit. Oh, right. Well, see, that's the thing. So because they screwed <laughs> up so badly, the SBA, you have a lot of business owners that uh, have gone into debt uh, waiting for the money. And unable to make their more their monthly payments on their regular credit. So now the SBA says, well, you know, if you don't have a 570 credit score, you declined. Except if you look at the credit report, SBA, if you please read the report, you'll see that prior to April of 2020, the person had immaculate credit. Yeah. After the COVID pandemic, you can you can literally see the wave of late payments. Yeah. And this up. goes back to number three. Where, oh no, I'm sorry, number two which is re re reading a business document <laughs> and part of the business document is a credit report. Okay. Number so do we want to answer some questions before we go to the last five? Well, let's do five and we'll be halfway okay. through. Okay. Number five is, oh, terrible communication and messaging. I, I, this might be my favorite. I don't know. They're all really good and well, they're the, all really you're bad. You're the queen of communications and messaging for our business. Isn't that what you yeah, do? Yeah. So they, there are so many things wrong with how they are communicating to the general public, to borrowers, to applicants, et cetera. They, are, they don't really tell you why you're declined. They don't point to, they, they will give you a reason, but you don't know what, like what's un unverifiable information mean anyway. What part of the application is unverifiable? Is it because my credit was locked and you couldn't get my credit score? Is it They don't tell you that. They don't tell you that. Is it because that you don't know if I'm a real business, but you didn't ask me for my SS4? I don't even know where it is. So do you have an alternate document? I Tell them what happened with Tom's application that I just put in a fresh new application. I did the application. Uh, yes. Original application for the comp for the client. And um, and the 4506T on the portal was correct because of the way I had completed the application. So the 4506T was correct. So we docu-signed the 4506T, which is unusual. Usually it's defective on the portal, but it was correct. And I'm humming along thinking any day I'm going to have an approval. This is a business that el eligible for over $1 million, but he only wants 500000 and last week, we got a letter saying declined due to unverifiable information. Now, at first, I questioned the client and said, hey, are you or your business partner credit reports locked? Mm -hmm. And he came back and said, no, not locked. Double checked, triple checked, not locked. We literally don't know why they so declined. So there's that. It. All it says is declined for unverifiable information. So there's that. Then what there's, the hell does that and mean? And this is another thing of calling the SBA, which I tell you not to, it's because you're going to call if, you're t if, you talk, <clears> if you call <throat> seven times in seven days in a row, you're going to get... 13 different answers or 14 or 37 different answers. So they don't know. Okay. You um, know, going back to the episode Monday with our client who called the SBA contributing our rules and our agreement. Um, he spoke to one SBA representative who gave him a, a whole litany for all three of his businesses and everything she told him was completely wrong right. about our paperwork and about his LLC. But we had another client do that a few months ago, violated our rules. And he said to me in the email, he said, you know, I know I, I, I broke the rules. He said, I know what you always say on your videos about how, you know, if you call seven agents, you'll get 13 different answers. He said, so I called back and I spoke to three different agents. So altogether, he spoke to four SBA agents. He goes, Trevor, oh, my God, yeah. you're right. Yeah. On my one file, four conversations, I got four completely different yeah. sets of information about the status of my file. And and so this is the thing about why we are so adamant about our opinion. <laughs> it's because the data is there. And what do I mean by that? Yeah, what do you mean by that, Linda? It's it's called evidence. It's <laughs> it's called data evidence. It's <laughs> called problem solving. 
uh, with taking a piece of information, i.e., I called four different SBA agents and they gave me four different answers. So I'm not going to call again. Okay, you're going to make a cognitive is that a word? Cognitive assessment. Assessment to ease use your the stress data. and use the data and ease your stress. Okay, so I don't have to call anymore. That's, that's more time I can focus on my business and redirect my focus. Why is this camera? Okay. Um, I stopped so, calling the SBA on our client files somewhere around March or April of 2021. Let me. Because of this reason. All right, so let me just, and then, so another thing is the SBA's website is different from the emails they send. This happened with the December 31st deadline. Their yeah, website. Why is our image frozen? Well, I don't know. This is on my website here. Uh, this is my computer, and this is. I have the stream yard open, but if this, hopefully it's not frozen. If you guys can tell us if we, you can see us and hear us. Um, and so they're contradicting their own information. So that's, that's the other thing. Oh, all kinds of stuff. And this is the worst thing that I can't stand I, with a passion. I despise how they do this. They are touting all these new programs and they can't get the one thing that business owners are relying on to stay alive in their business. Yeah. And they're talking about other things and how great they are. It's yeah. bullshit. Yeah, veterans initiatives, women's initiative, which is great because <laughs> that honors the original mission of the SBA. But we're still suffering from COVID, you know, as Kareem points out here, if you can yeah. put Kareem. All right, up, let's get to some Q&A. Go, go put up Kareem's banner. You know, I've been having Kareem a hard said, time. Mm -hmm. I've been having a hard time financially. My credit is why I was the first decline and since it's gotten worse due to a more drastic loss in revenue. And if they pulled my credit today, I'd get denied. Uh, and the SBA has no resiliency for this mm -hmm. that we've seen That's yet. A great We're hoping, Kareem, for you that they will be resilient. And by the way, just so you folks know a little bit about Kareem, this is a guy who helps families in crisis. Mm. Severe, severe crises. He is a counselor. God bless you, Kareem. You're doing good work. And it's going to come back on you. And mm -hmm. we're hopeful for a good result from you. Um, All right. So, Douglas, uh, what does the first community have? After an increase, what is, I don't know. First communicate, we're not really clear what your question is, but generally speaking, the only communication we care about, Douglas, is once we submit a file, we wait for SBA to say, okay, um, we're, we're, we're going to assign it. We're going to assign it to a loan officer. We're going to reactivate the file. Better, best quality emails when it says, please submit a bank statement or a voided check or a 4506 Corrected, uh, updated 2202. Things of that nature. They'll ask for documents. That's right. when they really are in it and reviewing well, we it. We yeah, well, yeah. I mean, at least it's starting where someone is looking at it, which then begins the process of how many other people will be looking at this file. Thanks, Erica. Erica told us our video is yeah. not frozen. Um, yeah, and so, Peter, yeah, I mean... <sighs> Sorry. Well, Peter, you know, we got a wonderful message from a, a client in Texas a few weeks ago. He's an electrical contractor. He hired us very recently. And he said, sent us an email, and he said, ever since I hired you, mm -hmm. I, and I don't have to think about this EIDL nonsense anymore, I could focus on my business. He said, I just signed $80,000 worth a new business mm -hmm. because I was able to think about that. And we like to think that that's what we're here to do. I mean, we're a professional application processing team. That's all we are. We're not rainmakers. You notice I said rainmakers. I know. I we're know. not magicians. We're not secret. We don't make things go yeah, faster. You know, no you we know. don't know anybody at the SBA. Uh, frankly, I wouldn't want to know anybody at the SBA. Uh -huh. All we are really good is reading your paperwork and translating that onto official or template forms that hopefully when they get in the hands of the right person the sba and they read them will get you an approval it's so important that i say the right person because the over 30 million dollars in approvals we've gotten uh most of that is reconsideration is through the right loan officer reading our paperwork and i've had loan officers tell me on the phone Oh, wow, like, Trevor, you know the guidelines better than some of my colleagues, mm -hmm. which is very sad. I want to answer Adam's question. Um, th this is like two parts. Number one, yes, after we've submitted Jumpstart, we have seen people get approved. But number two, we don't know if that just is the luck of the draw of they were going to have it, they were in the queue to be 
well, reviewed by someone and it just we, happened to. So Adam, you, you're on Jumpstart 2.0 with us. Yes. We did Jumpstart 1.0 on September 22nd mm -hmm. and we did see mm -hmm. results from that. And so we but not enough. used that data on what actions we had taken, what documents we had submitted, the forms and so forth. And we upgraded and revised and came up with a new document package strategy. And that led us into, at the end of the year, Jumpstart 2.0. And we are seeing results from Jumpstart 2.0. We just had uh, about a million dollars in approvals last week. Both files were Jumpstart 2.0 files. One of, us, one of those was a client with us since May. The other client, um, the doctor, she's with us, what, oh, since uh, July or August? August. August, August, yeah. August, yeah. So, yes, there is a result. But as we often say here on our shows, it's hit or miss with the SBA. It really comes down, you know, you know, my, my piece, patience, persistence, process, and person. Yeah. The person at the SBA, you know, I spoke to a wonderful loan officer a few months ago, and she said, you know, Trevor, it's a very simple process. The tax return and credit report is not complicated. And in that particular file, she said to me, well, you know, I'm asking you for this paperwork because I tend, I'm a former mortgage loan officer. She said, I tend to go the extra step. Yeah. And not my colleagues don't do that. No, because they're lazy and they're untrained. And I mean, they're just getting a paycheck. So, so. Chase Rice, well, I'm glad you brought this question up because they were, can we talk about the headline in the New York Times about the yes. IRS? Yeah, you don't have to ask me. You can talk about it. You don't do, need oh, my permission. Do, do you have a banner for it? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Well, can you, can All you right. go to NewYorkTimes.com? I don't know if this is us being mishandling or if IRS really doesn't well, have Well, let, let's oh, talk okay. about it, Chase. So, so the New York Times is reporting this, was this morning <laughs> or last night. Trevor, SBA president. Thank you, Dental. Uh, the, SBA, the, the New York Times is reporting that the IRS is going into the 2022 tax review season with a backlog of over or near, no, nearly 10 million tax returns, which still have not been processed. Yeah. And we are now getting feedback from some of our clients who have spoken to the IRS about returns that were filed July and June. June. Here we have a client who sent us a screenshot of his going to irs.gov. Where's my amended return for 2019? And it says you amended your amended return was received on June 28th, 2021. He called there and they said it was still not processed. So it's been six months. And in this, e seven. In this email, it says, however, it has not been processed. We apologize for any communities. And when he called, he said it may take four more weeks. So, Chase, the SBA could very well be sending the 45060, assuming that you have completed it correctly and assuming that you have not docu-signed one of the SBA's form that was defective in any way. And I say defective, like if it's Chase Rice is your name, if on your tax return it says Chase middle initial Rice, yeah, that will be rejected by yes. the IRS. If you file it, if it's a 1040 that you file, a personal tax return, and your spouse is on the return with you. You have to put them. On the 4506T. So, you know, we said this um, when I, you know, it's hard to know that not everyone is going to watch every single one of our videos. And so we, I sure as hell don't. We, so we see the questions. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah. So we see the questions of you d obviously did not watch this video where we say put side by side and make it exact. Side and by it, side it with makes the tax me return. a little sad because we did that video probably eight months ago. And yeah. now someone's asking about it now. They could have saved themselves eight months of of making a mistake on their 45. Chase, I think Linda's slapping you down a little bit. No, I'm not. I'm not, not. No, 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 nice. no, 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 but I wish they had, and I I post the link to the video and I said, make sure that you do that. Watch this video and do it exactly like your we have done return. dozens of videos on every aspect of the ideal process on how to fill out the paper. Well, that's the we other thing I'm trying road, to say roadmap is to reconsideration. I'm exhausted from saying the same thing. Yeah. We have the roadmap to reconsideration, which you can purchase, which gives you the forms, 
which tells you how to fill out the forms yeah. correctly, which tells you how I think as a loan officer slash underwriter with my critical review. So you can do a critical review of your documents and submit your best package to the SBA. Because yeah. that's the first step. You really have got to submit the best quality documents to the SBA. The second part is hoping that the right person gets the documents. All right. Peter has a quick question. I was told by, okay, tier two, I need to put 1040X on Doesn't the Doesn't make a difference. Since it was amended, it was correct. I will tell you, Peter, we put 1040X on ours, um, just we, as we put 1120S on ours. But my belief is that the, SB, the IRS will return the latest and greatest of yeah. the as recent. Long as, as long as it's 1040 and not 1065. Right. Or 11, even 1120 and 1120S, um, you know, I've been hearing lately how there are businesses, their accountant didn't file the right one. Well, that's a whole other that's issue. That's a whole other but issue. It, it, my understanding is that 1120 if you put 1120, and that's what the SBA does on the portal, they put 1120 when in fact it was 1120S. And we have seen results where the, rec the transcripts have come back. So I think you're okay. All right. Well, we don't Peter, have. But the other side of it is your statement, your question is exactly proof positive of what we said earlier. You call the SBA, somebody doesn't know how to tell you the truth. They don't know how to say, you know, Peter, that's a really good question. I don't know. Instead, they make up some bullshit. Well, you got to put an X. Yeah. You got to put a 1040X. All right. Should we, since we don't have any um, questions, wait, I have one more. Uh, hi, Beatrice. Uh, I see. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So another thing. Yeah. Get it. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unlike the, the server at the restaurant a few minutes ago who said, I don't actually eat meat. So she could not comment on Linda's. Yeah. Slawtastic sandwich. Slawtastic. All right. Number six. Uh, failure to recognize that some people have multiple businesses. This is, you know, it's America. Unbelievable. Why how would they anybody? Can't why are you that not shit out? Would anybody op own more than one business? How do you not know how to figure out if one business is different from the other? And why are you accusing? They're either accusing of fraud or they're mis duplicate application. duplicate application. I'm sorry. Is the name? But, but I will tell you. This is how. Like what? Uh, even if a name is similar, okay, ABC Toys and then ABC Toys Roman numeral two LLC, right? Yeah, you're going to different they, EIN numbers. They're people. not even looking. Okay, so they're not even looking that far. Here's here's what happened to me recently. We we had a client hired us to file an original application for two businesses. So we submitted the application before the December thirty first deadline for both businesses. Now. He claims the income for the two businesses on his personal 1040 tax return, each business on Schedule C. You got to go to one extra level of scrutiny there and ask the question, okay, business A, does it have an EIN number and its own bank account? Yes, then it's a standalone business entity. Does the second business, business B, on the other Schedule C, have its own EIN and its own bank account? Yes. So those are two individual business entities, and therefore they are two different EIDL applications. You cannot, SBA, lend money to the business A that goes on the books for business B. I mean, just from basic accounting principles yeah. and filing a tax return, you can't do that. You can't have you can't use the debt in the name of business A and spend the money in business B. Okay, so I submitted these two EIDL. I will tell you within seven minutes, the second application was declined due to multiple applications. Yeah, we're sorry to tell you you have submitted multiple applications for the same business. I did not. I'm a loan officer. I know how to do this. I sent in two separate applications. So now I had to file a reconsideration on the second one. Then they declined the first one, insufficient credit. So I pulled the client's credit report. It's got a 757 credit score on I mean, Experian. Come on. This is what we're dealing with. And do you see how calm I'm being? I know. I'm not ranting. I know. I guess that dude abides cheeseburger really hit the spot. Hit the spot. All right, number seven, failure to provide cogent 
reconsideration process. It's a mess. Two years in. I mean, it's just, there's no words. There are no, I mean, I have a lot of words and there are expletives. You know, tell the folks how you feel. I guess I, it's tell my ranting folks, day to tell the folks how you feel. No, let it's, it's, let it out. Let it out. I mean, I've Express written, Express yourself. I've written two procedure manuals for two different businesses. It's not rocket science, people. Like, how, who at the SBA is training or not training or providing a process or no process, like what the is going on here that they can't do that? Do you have bullet points on this failure to, oh no, no it's a mess. It's okay, a mess. two, two years, years in. in. Okay. I mean, SBA has no sense of focus on the reconsideration process whatsoever. Back in the summer when they applied all of these human assets to clearing the quote unquote backlog of increased requests and they were so patting themselves on the back. Yeah. We used to see on, on Skip's channel, um, he Ryder would have on an SBA administrator, assistant administrator, talking about how great a job they were doing. We increased our loan officers from 2.6 files a day to 15 files a day, and then yeah, they're oh, declining them. And then the autumn, she's on the on his show telling everybody they cleared the backlog. But Ryder said the same thing on his show that we say on our show. What about all the folks who are in reconsideration? Yeah, and the, and, and all of the SBA's media relations, not a word. Beatrice, and these are files that were declined for stupid reasons. Beatrice, first of all, love the Moxie. Okay, I love it. If it's, Beatrice, your, if it's, your, Moxie, if it's your last it. name, I love it. Um, you change the information from your original application by using the thirty five hundred one. In our roadmap, we have samples of the thirty five hundred one. How to fill it out? We have instructions on how to fill it out, line by line. Or you hire us or, to do it. Yeah. So um, that's it's the thirty five hundred one. You can download it. Go to SBA, right? You can go to SBA.gov and download. Well, it. no. What you want to do is you really want to Google it. Okay. And that will actually take you. Uh, if I'm not, it's been so long since I did it. I don't think I got it from an SBA website. I think I got it from the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. I think that's Google where I found it. 3501. It's an SBA form. I'm putting up a banner for it so you can... Understand, Beatrice, we're answering your question. We're giving you like a real simple answer. Fill out 351, but understand something else. You know, you're talking about changing information on your from your original application by using this form. You know, you're going to want to make sure you fill it out correctly. And the best way to ensure you do that is to either purchase our roadmap to reconsideration or hire us to do it. All right, number seven. Oh, no, we did that. Number eight, failure to provide resiliency processes for changing business. Oh, yeah, like bank accounts and emails. Like, like what all Beatrice the time. is asking about. All the time. This whole changing bank accounts is ludicrous how hard it is. It's like you have to go back into the reconsideration process. You can't. It's like they wait and they wait, whereas instead... You can just change the numbers in a field on the computer. It's like magic. The technology. Well, the way it actually works, when you have a competent loan officer on the phone, the loan officer will have you log into your portal and will clear the portal of the depository information for you, and then you will re-enter it, and the loan officer will then register it. It has to be manually done. Imagine driving a 1969 Camaro SS in a gorgeous blue candy apple blue finish and it's a hot rod of a car except to get it started you got to get out of the car and stick in the crank and spin the crank around you know like they used to do in 1898 to start a car that's what the SBA's procedure is to change a bank account it's so stupid it makes no sense now going back to 3501 technically that is the instrument you should be using to change your business address to change your bank account information or other pertinent information and then the sba should be able to read that form and go oh i have a revised application here let's change it in the system sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it comes back down to the person who is reading or not reading the form generally speaking changing your email address or your bank account with the SBA is a absolute and total meltdown yeah. of a nightmare. It's really sad when I post uh, when I post on our community 
channel or a community tab, if you don't have to change your bank account, don't. Like people should not be able to, ha sh people should be able to make changes. I mean, that's the whole. Well, they should be able to do this. Yeah. Read this one. What This is no protocol cited on SBA website or on the phone to complete vital changes such as bank accounts. This goes so, back to the poor messaging and communication. There's no instructions anywhere on the SBA website. Right. That tells you how to do this. It's not in the EID loan agreement. It's not anywhere. They And if you call, you will be told the wrong thing. You know, I, so when I owned an insurance agency, I focused, my specialty was, I managed the commercial lines department. So I spoke to business owners, hundreds, you know, every day and change happen all the time. And especially with insurance, it can get complicated depending on the state you're in and the type of business that you have, et cetera. And, you know, it's not, I never had the frustration like I've had in these last 22 months in talking to business owners because they, you know, maybe the insurance wasn't their thing. I had a photographer friend. She was like, Linda, I'm like, I'm great with. I'm not that mindset. Like, I'm insurance? creative. I'm, you know, she's so smart. She goes, but insurance, it's like, well, like, no. so it didn't frustrate me to counsel on insurance and advise and educate on insurance. It didn't frustrate me. The fact that the SBA is a small business administration and they it, we've said this a thousand times. If we ran the business like the SBA mm -hmm. runs their organization, we would all, there we, would be no all business. Would be out of business. We would be out of business and there would be no SBA. Here's a, here's a story I want to share with you that there happened not in the last, the last week. Um, so for our house, we when we bought the house, we got private mortgage insurance because we put down less than 20%. And um, we received a notice from the bank that they have canceled the PMI. Yeah. Effective November 30th. And then Linda was going through the paperwork and discovered that her December payment to yeah. the mortgage company, to the bank, included PMI. Now, right. she mentioned to me, but I was overwhelmed with helping you folks with getting files on it. it my old mortgage loan officer answered, should have come immediately to my lips, but I, I didn't. She called customer service. And this is where I'm, really is the contrast between a bank and the SBA calls customer service and she got this wonderful polite young woman who said well Linda when you make a payment on December 1st you're actually making a payment on interest and other charges for the, for month, the month before, before. November oh, so that's okay. why your PMI was on your December statement mm -hmm. your January statement will not have it Okay, thank you very much. How, and that was about uh, 78 seconds. It was 78 call. seconds. I was on hold longer than the the actual interaction with the rep. And now you contrast that to what Peter said before about the 1040X yeah. speaking to the loan officer. They don't know. You know, or our client speaking to somebody who said, no, you have to say it's a, a managing member, not a sole member, you know, of the LLC. Is unimaginable how the SBA cannot spend some time to actually train their staff. <laughs> you know, it, so when we first started this business, um, we, were, we were doing business financing prior to this, helping business owners get funding when the bank <clears throat> wouldn't approve. And I, I did insurance for 30 years. I didn't know anything about the fundamentals of financing and underwriting a file for financing and all that. And, and then when we started the EIDL, I was doing the marketing. I was setting up on how to get the content out for you guys to see with how we were experiencing the, the EIDL with the SBA. So we would share that step-by-step -step stuff so you would know and have this information. So now it's only in the last month have I gotten into working with the files and, and Linda's assisting more with the processing side. So she's really getting a hands-on experience of Trevor's ongoing nightmare for the last 20 And so, months. and plus doing these shows, I've learned a lot mm -hmm. and I don't understand how they don't know. You know, I'm not saying like, I'm so smart and like Menza. No, no. But how do you not, how do you work there and not know how to do your good job? <laughs> And listen, okay, SBA, so you're not training people. Okay, but SBA agents and representatives, don't you care about what you do for a living? Yeah. What would it take for you, SBA folks, you know, on your day off to go to the freaking library and take out a book and read about, you know, 
small business for dummies, which will teach you <laughs> what, a, what, a, what an LLC is, what a DBA is, what an S Corp, what a C Corp, what membership is compared to a president and, a, and an owner and a shareholder. I mean, I don't understand John Jones. Uh, it's help with updating bank info. Change I don't banks and SBA sent increased funds to old bank account. Yeah. Yeah, well, John, yeah. that that's the problem. You, if you just joined us and you didn't and you weren't with us about ten minutes ago, you're going to want to rewind uh, because that was actually uh, number. No, we were just talking about it because it's number eight with the resiliency process. This is this show is about ten things that the SBA has gotten wrong. Can you post a Denisha Brown's comment? Yeah. At uh, three twenty-three, Denisha, right there. I couldn't change so, my Denisha. Yeah. You, you are you're preaching to the choir, girlfriend. You're talking to us about the complete idiocy. Yeah, it's a word that Linda invented. I'm, yeah, I made that up. It's a it's a good one. She's I, good. She's good like that. She makes up words. But Denisha, uh, Linda made up the word idiocy, which is a good description of your experience with that loan yeah. officer. Like um, that loan officer, the, the system wouldn't allow it. It's well, first of all, we, we have a whole it's embarrassing. problem with SBA's technology. It's a nightmare. But also because why didn't the loan officer, Denisha, why didn't the loan officer get a supervisor involved? I don't know. You know, when I was a young mortgage banking loan officer, I didn't know how to do everything. You right. know what I did? I went to my boss. Yeah. Or I went questions. to a fellow loan officer. You learn. Or I went to the underwriter downstairs. Or you the take a class. class. You know, I have to take continuing it. I have to do 24 hours of continuing ed well, every two Denise's years. Well, in case, you can't take a class. Because no, no, no. I'm just saying for, for the, I'm, I'm still on the fact that people work at the SBA and don't know what the, they're doing. Yeah. It's complete rubbish. Complete rubbish. And I actually have a gift for that. If you haven't checked out our gift, well, in case you're wondering why I'm wearing .com, my hat, Aurora let me show you the reason why I'm wearing my hat today. Because we're in our office. It's actually yeah, quite warm. Yeah, Peter. Look at my Boom. hair. Boom. Common sense. My hair is. Where's the common actually, sense? Now it looks pretty good. My yeah. hair looks better than it did before the show. Thank you, hat. No common sense. Okay. I don't understand how there could be no common sense. <sighs> okay. So here. So two years, Chase. Oops. Did I? What did I do here? Uh, after. So we're, oh, so after two years, the original loan, uh, you I, have up until... I, I don't think you're asking the question the correct way, Chase. So let me just recite the guidelines. As per the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Authorization Agreement, also known as EIDL-LAA, what it says is that the business owner must, as soon as possible of recognizing the need for additional funds notify the SBA of its request for additional funds no later than 24 months from disbursement date. So, therefore, technically, if you got a loan on April 17th, 2021, and it was dispersed on April 19th, 2021, you have 24 months from April 19th, 2021, that means through April twenty April eighteenth, twenty twenty three, to request twenty twenty three. To you I said twenty twenty, right? Twenty twenty one. I oh you said twenty twenty one. April eighteenth, twenty. It's the original loan. The original loan is April seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Some people are coming up on okay. this year. The original is there loan. Two years. April. I'm doing this so you can save this and do uh, it later. Oh, okay. So let's say you got an EIDL loan. You were approved on April 17th, 2021. The funds dispersed on April 19th, 2021. You have 24 months, two years from April 19th to request additional funds and to be approved for it. That means you have until April 18th, 2023, mm -hmm. which is 24 months. Yes. So Does that to answer, answer the your question? question, Chase, that's the process. Now, SBA keeps saying, quote, or until the funds run out. Yes. My professional opinion is this. How is the Congress going to allow the SBA to run out of money when you all have a contract with the United States government? Yes. For a loan that you borrowed. This is not money they gave to you for free. Okay. You borrowed the money. You have to pay it back for 30 years at 3.75% interest or 2.75 a year or not for profit, you have to pay it back. 
And the contract that you have with the United States government says 24 months to request additional monies. It doesn't say or until the funds run out. What is this supposed to be a 24? What is this? That's 24 months. That's I know you're a football fan. You think that means a <laughs> That's goal. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> I'm framing out 24 months. That does so, not look like 24. So, so therefore. This looks like 24. The contract says 24 months. The contract does not say or, or until, until the, the funds run out. out. So if stupid, stupid, folks, stupid, if you got any idea and you've requested an increase or you want to request an increase in the future within 24 months, as per the terms of your a contract with the United States government, you should be able to apply you and really? receive the funds, assuming you're eligible, you know, qualified. You're, you're behaving, Willie. I like that. So about you. therefore, why is the SBA's messaging say or until the funds run out? You know, hey, an email or a website statement or a press release from the SBA does not contravene a contract, Isabella Guzman. You can't say out loud to people or until the money runs out when your contract says 24 months. You know, this is the thing, too, that's that's alarming. <clears throat> alarming. You know, if you're in management at the SBA and you're in the leadership hierarchy at the SBA, I'm going to go out on a limb here and think that maybe you're paying attention to some of the social media or maybe you're watching some videos. Oh, I'm sure they're watching us. And uh, you think so? Oh, because it's September 8th proved it. Okay, so because wait, before you get into that, before I lose my thought, how have you not heard, SBA, that people are freaking out that you're going to run out of money and then you're using little disclaimers to cover your ass? How are you fucking that shit up? Like, I just dropped the F-bomb because that's how... What? Okay. Okay. All right, so September Vito. 8th, hold on, September 8th, uh, Vito, SBA uh, upgraded Vito. their website. They upgraded the EIDL original application. Um, on the website, and in some of their email messaging, they started to provide some additional clarity. We noticed in September emails coming back from SBA when we would submit a reconsideration for a client. The a email said, thank you. We're confirming receipt of your reconsideration. Please note that reconsiderations are processed uh, within 30 days, appeals mm. for months. And if you upload documents, please understand it can take up to two weeks for your documents. Now, it now says 30 days, by the way. That new messaging says it'll take 30 days. So you think they're watching us because they did this and you think it's because of us? And also on the website, the instructions know. about 4506T for all of you to read on the SBA website are actually pretty good instructions. The fact that the SBA doesn't read their own instructions when yeah. they prepare the forms is a whole other issue. But the fact is, if you go to SBA.gov right now and you go into the FAQ for applying for an EIDL, it will give you some pretty good clear instructions on how you should fill out a 45060. I just don't know how the SBA agents themselves don't read their own damn website. <gasps> oh, Antoine, I didn't know. Oh my gosh, I hope you're going to be okay. We'll be thinking oh, no. about you. Pop socks, dude. Oh, man. I hope you're Love okay. Love you too, brother. Hope you're well. All right, Vito, just because I like saying that name. All right. Vito Serobian. So it's five months, which I sadly have to say is kind of normal. It's kind of normal. Um, but if you wanted to do something and feel a little bit in control, you could... Um, so he could do his own jumpstart. You can do your own, what we call jumpstart, which is you send an email to PDC Recons. Uh, you with, can, with the forms. With your forms. So your forms are going to be 3501, 3502. Um, you're going to have to look this up or you get a roadmap. 3501, 3502, 2202, PO22. 4506T, your S license, SBA 2019, your 1368, if applicable, if applicable um, your 2019 tax return, uh, and your photo ID, and your voided check. And your voided check. 
and uh, you submit all of that to the PDC. And then, as if you've never submitted it before. As in, Send like, it in as if it's brand new. Yeah, exactly. That's what we call jumpstart. In other words, it's like you're you know you're you're applying CPR to your file. Be and well, Vito, just Antoine. to keep in all the best to you, Antoine. Uh, just to keep in mind, Vito, that we have for sale our roadmap for reconsideration, which is a book we prepared. A, a if not a book, it's a, it's a it's a course. It's a lesson system on not only does it include the forms that we just cited, but it teaches you the right way to fill them out, but also teaches you critical thinking yeah. for what I call critical document review, how I think of looking at your documents, Vito, okay. as a loan officer and an underwriter. You know, uh, you know, and I also, since it's an increase, you can also, I, I say send it to the PDC email or no, the COVID so, increase email. Vito, I, you, it doesn't, no, doesn't it matter. Does, yeah. okay, Vito, whatever. you want to send it to COVID? Idle increase requests. Just to Google it, you'll find SBA. it. There's an S in there. I think it's requests. But I just want to go back to what I do as a loan officer compared to what you all do. So the other day, one of our clients whose file is in reconsideration for increase got an email from one of the clerks, one of the paralegals, you know, the record keeping knuckleheads at SBA, asking him for the PO22. And the client got very excited, and I wrote to him, I said, don't get excited. This has nothing to do with your reconsideration. This is just SBA post-closing record keeping. So we already had the PO22 prepared, and uh, he had already docu-signed that. So we just, I sent it to him, I said, reply to the loan, the paralegal with the form. Well, this schmuck attorney comes back and says, your form is wrong. Um, so the attorney says, Please change the name of your company from Corp to Incorporated, <gasps> INC. Super sticker. Okay. Thank you, Vito. Okay. Okay. Let me Sorry. Push. Sorry. So <laughs> change the, apparently the attorney says change the form to say INC for Incorporated as opposed to Corp. And I'm like, wait a minute. We prepared the form at Aurora Consulting. You know, my team is, is trained and we have a critical review process to make sure we catch mistakes like this. So I jump into the client's file and all the documents, the tax return, the articles of formation, the EIN, everything says corp. Uh. But this is where I think differently than all of you out there in the world because I think like an underwriting loan officer. I opened up the EIDL loan agreement from the original loan in June of 2020. What did I see? What did you see? INC Incorporated. Whoa. So when the client, who's now our client, who was not our client in 2020, when he applied for the original EIDL, he screwed up and put INC for Incorporated as opposed to Corp. Sure, or if, if he didn't fill that in, whoever he hired, his CPA, whoever filled it in, put it wrong. And so the attorney literally at the SP was just doing her his or her job, just saying, hey, listen, on your EIDL loan agreement, it says INC. So my response to that was I prepared an email, sent it to the client. And by the way, this part of it, we do it as a courtesy for our paying clients because we, they don't, you, you, SBA cannot pay us enough to do all this extra work and they cap our fee artificially. Kareem, all the best to you. God bless my brother. Um, so I prepared an email for the client saying, okay, s s reply to the, the, the attorney with this. Uh, please find attached articles of formation, EIN, 2019 tax return. Please note that when I filled out the original EIDL application, I inadvertently, in error, by mistake, I didn't do all that, but I just said, you know, inadvertently, entered INC as opposed to Corp. The correct name of the business is Corp. This is what we do at Aurora Consulting, and this is why we encourage you, Vito and we folks like you, more. to buy the uh, Roadmap to Reconsideration if you want to do it yourself, because it'll just give you that little extra edge yeah. to think the way I think. All right, so we're continuing with the top 10 things the SBA has bleeped up, and we're on number nine. Number nine is tied to one. They're all actually tied together, and I don't have a banner with it all hurts. 10, but... I'll figure something out on how to post all 10. Um, number nine, it goes to number one, which is about fraud. In an inordinate focus on fraud because they screwed up so bad. And now you're all you legitimate businesses who are watching this right now have to pay the price of their screw ups in the beginning. 
So here they're we are treating you all like criminals. They're basically their shoot first, ask questions later mentality comes yeah. out of the idea that all of you are attempting to commit fraud. Okay. This is a lot like a highway cop who's sitting by the side of the highway with his or her radar gun and assuming that every single person is speeding before she turns on her radar gun. Yeah. When in fact, not everybody is speeding. Actually, these days, probably everybody is speeding, but some of them are speeding worse than others. But eh, that's a whole other thing. There has been fraud. And, yeah. and, you know, we see every day in news reports. You know, the Justice Department loves putting out press releases about oh, how they know. locked up somebody for doing $9.1 million of PPP and EIDL fraud who bought expensive watches and hired strippers and bought a luxury car. Yeah, all of that. That's great. But, you know... Billions of dollars were loaned out. Billions. So if you take the couple of tens of millions, even if it's a billion, let's say it's a billion dollars, a couple of billion, compared to the hundreds of billions that were loaned out, come on. It's a drop in the bucket, yeah. SBA, which means that not everybody's committing fraud, but the way they're treating all of you. Well, I did a 60-second video. I say that, but sometimes they're, they're less than that. But I did a short, because that's what YouTube calls it, a short um, and I, I don't remember which one it is to even put the link in because I've done, I don't know how many of these 60 second videos and we had talked to a loan officer and he told us he sees the notes in the file and there are loan reps and SBA folks oh, that think you're committing fraud. You're talking about, Legit. You're talking about. They're. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. was, I love this guy. So he's 70 years old. He's retired from a recent career at Bank of America as a loan officer, a mortgage banking loan officer like I was. But before his second career at Bank of America, he had a previous career at the FBI. Yeah. He was a, a, he was a special agent working at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And so this is a man who has banking experience and experience with real criminals. And he said to me on the phone, he said, Trevor, He's looking at the notes on one of our clients' file. Yeah. And it had to do, by the way, with the bank account, bank account information. He said, you know, Trevor, the thing is a lot of my colleagues, they treat these files. The, the minute they see anything that looks slightly confusing, they immediately assume it's fraud. He goes, you got to see the notes that I see in files uh -huh. every day where people, SBA people all across the country are just making notes as if there's fraud happening in the file. They're, they're, and once he said once they flag a file that way, it's very, there's a whole adjudication process yeah. and a whole other set of eyes that have to go on the file that slows down or prevents the approval. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is back a few months ago, the SBA's Office of Inspector General, OIG for short, uh, presented a report regarding the PPP loan program and how many ineligible businesses. Thank you received PPP loans. And when, and this OIG came out from the shadows, which is unheard of, and actually went on TV news programs and so forth. And and I think he did a press conference, which is unheard of. You know, these the each federal agency, uh, whether it's the Navy, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the SBA, um, the Secret Service, they all have an Office of Inspector General to investigate um, multiple episodes that make the agency either misspend tax dollars or or to examine processes to make the spending of tax dollars more efficient. Um, so this OIG, and I don't remember his name, but he mm -hmm. he said that, you know, m I don't know if he said millions, but he said a, a, a huge number of businesses received PPP loans when they didn't actually have employees. And so that was, he's saying it's fraud, 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 fraud. And it made the headlines, you know, the seven o'clock news, it's all over the place. Except we know from our experience since March 2020, having done both rounds of PPP as a courtesy for our paying EIDL clients. And I will tell you this year, the PPP was an absolute nightmare. To do. Yeah, the second one was ridiculous. We um, had to first one shut wasn't, that down. wasn't real easy either, but, but. We speak to business owners all the time who tell us they've got three employees. <laughs> and then I look at their tax return, and in the box on the tax return for salaries and wages, you know what it says? 
Nothing. Mm. That means you're not paying anybody with a W-2, which means you're paying them with a 1099, which means they are what, Linda? Contractors, 1099. And they're not what? Not employees. Right. So the OIG, instead of recognizing this fundamental fact about how small business owners operate, which is they operate, many of them, mistakenly, he just blankets all of you with the labels, all of you with the, with the word fraud. You committed fraud. You didn't commit fraud. You made a mistake. You didn't have employees. You had 1099s, and you're calling them employees because you're an idiot. Okay, mm. but this is how heavy handed the SBA has become to protect your tax dollars, which we remind you, you're borrowing. It's not a handout. All right. I mean, it, it, for PPP, for most businesses, it is. It's a grant because it's forgivable. But still, this is, you know, government clerk bureaucracy 102 and how heavy handed a, a federal bureaucracy can be in making wrong assumptions and failing to be resilient and cognizant of what's really going on out in the world. I dealt with this with the Federal Housing Administration and the Veterans Administration throughout my entire career in the mortgage business. I will tell you, though, that they were way more resilient than the Small Business Administration is, massively more. They actually cared about getting people approved for mortgages. So. Um, do you want to put more questions up? Yeah. Because I'm kind of rambling on here because you look like you're I, kind of – I... oh, oh so, so when we talked about today's show, <laughs> Linda has been kind of reprimanding me all week for last week's show where I ranted and raved, screamed at the microphone, and and just – I never shut up. She's like, oh, my God, it's terrible. Super sick of Ray Newton. Hey, Ray. Thank you. And Linda was yelling at me thank for you. Means how, a lot. Means how a lot. I kept interrupting her and I kept talking Except I reminded her, I go, well, that's because you are doing what she's literally doing right now. Do you, Linda's not even looking at the screen. I know. She's not looking at our script, which is over here. She's not talking to you. She's interacting with you. And I'm okay with that. because. But so when I talk a lot, it's for this reason. Okay, what? This me, this face means you're back. Now you want to talk? I'm I back. Shut up. I'm back. I'm back because we got a super sticker. And um, yeah, so and KEA. So yeah, regrets not taking full amount in round one. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've had to tell people, why are you taking less than what you can get? Why? I don't understand. And then they go into, I don't want a personal guarantee and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I can't talk to you. <laughs> well, I, I had that conversation with one of our early day clients and he, he hired us in April of 2020. We have to go to number 10, so hurry it up. Okay, and he was client number like seven or eight, four or five or something like that. And um, whatever our offer was, I think it was 100000 from the SBA. He said, you know, I don't know what, I don't know if I should uh, I don't want it after 25000 it was that, that there was. No, I had nothing to do with the personal guarantee. He was just like, you know, I, I, I don't know if I need the full 100000 Trevor. What should I do? And I said to him, it's a very simple answer to that question. Take the full amount. Yes. For two reasons. Number one, this was, you know, June of 2020. Nobody knew how long COVID was going to last. But I, having maybe been around the block a little too long, too many times, I said, listen, <laughs> this thing is unknown and uncertain. And you mm. and your business, specifically, I said to him, you, your business requires you to fly around the country and do seminars in hotels. And, it, and this is June of 2020 when all those hotels were closed. I said, so you don't know how long. You're going to, and this program is designed to replace that revenue that you're losing. I said, secondly, there's no prepayment penalty uh -huh. on the loan. Oh, and there were three things. And third is you have no payments due at that time for 12 months. Now it's 24. I said, take the full boat. And he did. He took the full amount. And then he contacted us in the summer of 2021 to get the increase. But he said to me, I want the increase because this thing is still going on. I can't really set up seminars. He said, but by the way, I still have like 80000 left over from the original 100 that I haven't used yet. So, full All right. Time. So, um, ooh, uh, my I just got the alert that my battery on my laptop is going to be dying. But right, I'm going to plug you in. No, but we're also go ahead, go at number, number 10. 10. Number 10 is seems like a total catch-all blanket of all things that are wrong that we just talked about. So number 10 summarizes the previous nine. <laughs> 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 so... Uh, Everything about the SBA is wrong. I, I challenge anyone out there that is listening to us right now or in the replay, thank you, to 
Let me know what you think the SBA has gotten right. I would love to know. I would love one thing. We would love. To I would know. love for anyone to comment here. This is the. This is your homework. Find something that's right about the SBA and post it here to let us know so we can be enlightened and feel good about what we do for business owners and what we've been doing for 22 months because we're shutting this down we, we March 17th. Once or two or three or four times on our shows, people have commented saying, wow, Trevor, it sounds like you're defending the SBA. Oh, we had someone. I was like, well, you have not watched any of our other videos, dude. Yeah. But I, I mean, there was a, a long period when I said, listen, you really need to look at what they did accomplish. I mean, they put huge amount of cash infusion into the American economy, and they did it rather seamlessly. So I was willing to compliment the SBA up to a point, but that point passed a long time ago because yeah. because Rivera and Guzman and the other folks that, that run the SBA are fools, and they're incompetence, and they are they are not adapting processes. They're not training their base their agents in basics yeah. about business documentation, business processes, you know, and and, and the 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 application and reconsideration process both are overly complicated for one reason only, SBA's incompetence. So I thought the shuttered venue grant was over. I think it, that's it over. It is over. So I don't know. We wouldn't do a video on that because it's... Well, we didn't do those, Kia, as a rule. We, you know, we, we, we helped some of our clients with restaurant relief as a courtesy um, because they were paying EIDL clients, and we all know how terribly that failed thanks to Congress being a populated by cheapskates. Well, I, John Jones, I thought we talked about bank accounts already. You might have to rewind this. Uh, maybe you came in. I thought we already answered a question about this, even with you. But. We don't know, John, what the redeposit process is. That's why we haven't answered your question. Or I thought we discussed the whole changing no, bank accounts what, what process. What happened with John is that the, the, the SBA deposited the money into an old account. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Sounds to me, John, like you got to go to the old bank and say, hey, give me my money. I I would have to say, KEA, I would find it highly improbable. No, it's not going to happen. That is, this is how they're going to make money. This, the, the, Kia, <laughs> never going to happen. You watch, st so, Kia, oh, watch oh. us stop reading Reddit. Oh, my God. Who That's some Reddit grade. I'm eating Hot Pockets in my mommy's basement at 2 in the morning because I live at home and I'm a loser of a 24-year-old young white male Who's a loser? He's talking on about Reddit. Reddit. Who talking about Reddit. Reddit. The morons. Stop. Who, by the way, the Stop. red assholes who this. told all you people to file amended tax returns back in March of oh, this yeah. year yeah. and April of this year, so you'd get more EIDL money. Yeah, you know what they were telling you to do? Committing <laughs> fraud. Okay, Kia, <laughs> stop reading Reddit. It's crap. <laughs> It's, it's such drama. It's like the soap opera of social media. They are not going to forgive the EIDL program. You know what I have said? We've had, this question has come up early days, and in my in our early videos, here's my response <laughs> to this uh, for what I suspect Congress might want to do. Yes, as we come out of COVID, which we're nowhere near doing that. Depending on the economic output. Of the United States, what's GDP doing? What are the jobs reports? What's the state of the economy? And which right now is not doing so great. Uh, my opinion, as a professional loan officer with over 30 years' experience as a direct lender, is this: the Congress might, in the future, reduce the interest rate yeah. on the EIDL program, but forgive it? Hell yeah. no! No way! No way! This is hundreds of billions john go to the community tab go to the in our channel you go to the you know under the cover heading to a cover photo go to community just recently if you scroll down i reshared the post that i probably did i don't even know if it was seven months ago or so uh of if you have to change your bank accounts i did a post on it there's links to other posts and videos about changing your bank account that's the best I can do right now. So, um, all right. So we did the 10 things that SBA has screwed up. This is the nice way of saying they effed up. Um, so I'm going to put the list on our community tab. So you'll want to hang out there to see it. 
And if you guys have any questions, now would be the time. We've been on for an hour and 23 minutes. It flies by with you guys. You're by so the way, nice so I'm fun. just over here on my laptop checking emails while Linda was um, winding the show down. And, of course, what's at the top? Two, two SBA emails, mm -hmm. two SBA press. They're already in my trash. But you want to see them, Linda? Sure. Here we go. Oh, yeah. SBA. Here's, here's the first one. Um, SBA email, how we're kicking off 2022 for women in business. Yeah. You know, more of the SBA patent itself on the back. Yeah. And um, then the next one is right here. Um, Council on Underserved Communities holds the first virtual meeting led by SBA Administrator Isabella Guzman and Chairman John W. Rogers, Jr. That's great. I'm really happy for you all, yeah. SBA. You seem to really be very much in love with yourselves. <laughs> um, but you suck at yeah. doing what the American business owner, How do you not your have... constituent, really needs. They don't need a virtual meeting with Isabel Guzman. They don't need an entrepreneurial center to be opened up to tell you how to go to the store and buy business plans for dummies. By the way, did you know that with the Small Business Development Corp offices, if you go there for assistance to, you know this because we started a business plan business which is now we close it down but yeah if you go to the small business development corp offices sbdc which is funded by the sba and you say to the person okay I'm, i want to open up a, a business how do i do that so they'll give you the fundamentals but guess what they won't do they won't teach you how to write a business plan yeah they don't even give you any literature on how to do that I'm sorry, this is the Small Business Development Corp. Don't you think, folks, at the SBA and SBDC, you should be teaching people how to write a business plan? It's and so by the way, if you we've we've gotten business plans from people prior to COVID when we were doing financing. It, you're the small business administration. How do you not have your finger on the pulse of what small business owners need and what they're talking about, what they're thinking about, what they're griping about, what they're bitching and moaning about? How do you not... Tap, tap, tap. How do you... Oh, we're back to doing ASMR? ASMR. ASMR. Hi, how are you? How are you today? I don't... I wish I had... I wish we were an ASMR uh, channel or a... a what do they call it? The Mac... The... What is that when you eat food on video and people like the massive Ooh, amounts ow, of yeah. they eat massive Ew, amounts of gross, food? Gross, These gross, channels gross. are blowing up. I tell you what, um, I want to start a channel about the Battle of Guadalcanal because my um, you know meditation time, if you will, what I do in the very little off time I have from not working on SBA loans to just try to really wipe my brain and relax and sleep well at night. I'm, I'm, a, his banging, I'm a history yeah. buff. So I'm, of late, I am studying and reading and listening and watching videos about um, the naval battles in 1942 yeah. and 1943 around Guadalcanal. And I am slowly becoming an expert. And Makawa should have taken his cruisers all the way in to the southern fleet, and he would have wiped out the United States Navy. And one fell swoop. Do you know what he was? And, w and Fletcher okay, stop. made the right decision stop. protecting the carriers. You had to protect the carriers. W-59, do you know this form? I don't know this form. We'll have to look it up. No. All right. So, Kia, this sounds like SBA form 159D, which oh. is if you hire, oh. you hire a broker like us, a <clears throat> consultant, or if you pay your CPA or an attorney or some other third party, to, quote, prepare the documents, end quote, for submission to the SBA's EIDL program, then the consultant is required to prepare form SBA form 159D only if, and submit this form to SBA, signed by you, only if the consultant's fee exceeds the following parameters. For an economic injury but disaster even... loan, natural disaster loan, for a homeowner or a renter, five hundred dollars. For a small business owner, twenty five hundred dollars. I'm looking. And that's up, what we charge. I'm looking up W dash. And you only have to send in the one fifty nine D one fifty nine D if your fee exceeds it. But they have a little codicil in this says basically as a consultant, if you want to charge more than the the max allow fee, you have to get SBA's permission first, which makes no sense. Well, it's but, that or a thermonuclear warhead. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't know what. Are this... you going to put that screenshot up? You should put that up. It's kind of funny. It is funny, but I just. Yeah, I, I, I think here you're talking about SBA form 159D. No, so there's a watch that's a, a W59. Uh, IRS, it's an IRS form. Hold on. No, it's not. No, it's a CP59 notice. That's a CP59 notice. It has nothing to do with the SBA. Huh. Uh, IRS notice CP59 form 1040 tax return. No, okay. Anyway, um, don't know. Don't know. And so uh, if you haven't got... Oh, Erica wants to. Yeah, well, Erica, I, we're gonna. I'm gonna get to you and to Kathy Lee separately. We'll email you. Um, you didn't. Do, we didn't do your jumpstart because we had to file a reconsideration, and then we started the jumpstart. But um, what is this, Percy? What do you? We both have to sign. What is this? She is not part of the business, but she. Oh, did I miss a, the first part of the question? Yeah, let's find Percy's first. No, part of the there's no. So Percy, it sounds like you're talking to a moron at the SBA. Or you got an email from a different moron at the SBA, because I've gotten the same email from the morons at the SBA. And so there's this new. All right, Peter, we're going to come back to that. Let's go back to Percy's question. Um, so there's this new gatekeeper attitude at the SBA of noticing for about four or five months now where they, you know, they have a they have a transcript tax transcript processing team. Wait, so I can't even find the tax Percy's. transcript processing team. The forty, it's right here. The forty five hundred six T processing oh. team is separate from the loan officers. In fact, the loan officers have nothing to do with the forty five hundred six T, which is shameful, because the people on the forty five hundred six T team are it's it's filled with complete morons. Mm. Um, and so we are seeing a gatekeeper attitude, as happened with our client the other day, where there was a note in the file from the forty five hundred six T team that he had the wrong title the the sba rep oh. said to him it says sole member but you, you're supposed to put managing member he's the sole was, member which was not true he's the sole member he's I mean, the only member the, you all see so but it doesn't even matter because the irs does not care what the person's title is all the irs cares about is the information at the top matches the tax return yeah and that there's an echo in here. that the um the signature is mm -hmm. from an authorized person the little box about attesting that you were authorized to sign it yeah. is checked off and that's it and checking off the box 6C for the for the correct type of transcript. Um, but this Percy situation, it looks like for your business, you file on a Schedule C, I'm going to guess, and you file a joint tax return with your spouse on an IRS Form 1040, personal tax return. And that's in your file. And now you sent in a 4506T mm -hmm. with correctly filled out with your name and your spouse's name, the address, and et cetera, et cetera, and some knucklehead at the SBA is saying, oh, well, you both have to sign the 4506T. You do not. You're not. It says it. Literally, it at the bottom of the form where it says, who is the authorized person? Only one person is required to sign this form. It says it on the form. And the SBA is t trying to do the IRS's job when they don't even know how to do their own job. It doesn't matter. They're not doing the IRS's job because the IRS doesn't need require, doesn't require two right. signatures. All right. Anyway. By the way, just so you know, Percy, we did it back in September. Oh, we had yeah. a client. This was Ashton, who's not on today's show. Who you, he usually usually here. He got the same request, mm -hmm. and I argued. But I, there's nobody to argue to because you can't call. There's nobody to call. Nobody to talk to. Say hey, you know. So we prepared a new 45060. We mm -hmm. sent it to. I had to get his wife's email address. So we sent it to him for DocuSign. We sent it to his wife for DocuSign. They both DocuSign it. We sent it into the SBA. That was September. He's still not approved. Right. This is the other thing we're saying about the inconsistencies and dysfunction of the SBA. They make all of you do all this bullshit work, but they don't actually approve the loan. Right. They just paper the shit out of your file. They paper you to death, yep. and they don't actually approve the loan. Listen, we, in the mortgage business, we used to, there were certain files we would paper the client to death also, but we actually approved the loan. I mean, they got the house. That's why the, that's the other thing when we, we – so we stopped taking new clients because Trevor was like, I'm used to, I'm used to approving a loan that, that eventually gets off my desk, that the person eventually gets the money. He's like, they're not even approving these loans. We have so many files in the system that have been with us for too long. 
I know you don't want to be with us and we want you to move on so you can do stuff that doesn't require dealing with us anymore. You know what I mean? It's like. So Kia, by the way, responded to your. Uh, what? Right there. 4.02 PM. 4.02. PM. Right, that one. You that one right there. This one? Yeah. What, she she said maybe the SBA. It oh, might be the SBA one. Oh, yeah. yeah. SBA councils were difficult to hear. Yeah. Yeah. W. There's no. Yeah, w we noticed that also. Uh, it's phone manners. One fifty nine D as in uh, Delta. Sam Shrep. Yep. Shrep just says the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I've overall, I've had really good experiences on the phone with SBA folks. What? Both with uh, courtesy and so forth, but also I'm I'm a colleague. I mean, I'm a professional loan officer, and I introduce myself that way. So they tend to treat me differently uh, in terms of how they respond to me with a more professional. I only had one who was a really nasty son of a gun, and uh, I'm not going to talk about him today. Um, I just put my email, Kia, so you can email me. I don't know why that, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to get that, that it's, it should be. So we're going to be closing it down in a couple of minutes, folks. If you have more questions, just fire away. Yeah. Um, Erica, we are getting to you. There's a reason why I haven't done you yet. I've been doing some observations, which I hope are going to be able to help your situation and a couple of other clients who have a similar situation to you. So that's why. Mm. A lot of what I do is tracking results and failures with the SBA system, which helps me because because you, you can't call and ask somebody. You can't read it on their website. I have... This statement of operating procedures, multiple versions I've downloaded, and God, whoever writes those things, I mean, English, uh, they, they failed, you know, writing class in grammar school, high school, and college. But um, the way I analyze and create strategies for clients like you, Erica, is to examine results and failures for other files. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, Eddie, the whole amend return, it's a it's a crapshoot when you're doing that. So I don't know what happened with that. So, well, Eddie, tell us why you filed an amended return and tell me the date. Respond to my question right here, right now. Say, this is why I filed an amended return. Keep it short, keep it accurate, specific, and give me the date that you filed it. And I'd like to try to answer your question. Yeah. Um, and then Kia, I gave you my email for, you, you should be able to click on the button. It's a blue button to buy it. It, it takes you to a, a page and then there's PayPal buttons. Um, so I'm putting that in the, uh, putting that in the link as well. I mean, I'm putting that in the, the chat as well. Yeah, Jamie, if you go down to Jamie's comment. Yeah. So Jamie, you know, we put your file in multiple times. Yeah. Multiple times. And in, in almost you're a year. not alone in not hearing anything. Um, it's it, it is why we say all the time with the SBA, it's such a confusing, dysfunctional mess over there. And instead of SBA patting themselves on the back about opening up a, a small business development center to assist veterans and women, they should focus some of their attention and your tax dollars on helping Jamie Merriman's file get approved and many thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of applicants yeah. like you who have heard nothing. Yeah. It's a disgrace. One of our former clients um, actually worked for the SBA for a short period some years ago. She told us this when she first hired us. And um, this is a woman who built a career assisting um, probate cases in courthouses, which obviously she was severely uh, damaged by the effects of COVID because she, there's no courthouses, right? And the cases get slowed down, everything. And she had to pivot and do something completely different. And she actually told us to stop working on her EIDL files. It was just, just like, it's, it's too late. I, I found another way to make money and I don't want to borrow the money. <laughs> she sent us an email uh, over the Christmas holidays. Yes, I will. And she said, what you two are doing is invaluable and what you your business is going through with the SBA is a national disgrace. Yeah. Uh, so, Percy, we have heard of, on a few occasions that the SBA is actually allowing borrowers and applicants to submit their own tax transcripts. I, you know, we've not to approve the loan or not. But yeah, but we but we did a video 
on that, on the tax transcripts and why they possibly are just reading well, it. I know but- why, because we, I, I had a, an SBA loan officer who was a real jackass. She was a real nightmare to deal with. She, she hung up on the phone on me. She refused to speak to me on the phone and she was terrible to respond, but email. Um, and I argued with her that the, the return had been filed. And I finally got her to say to me, okay, I'll tell you what she said. If you can show me a transcript obtained by your client from the IRS, oh. and she's not the only one who told me this. I had a couple of different owners to tell me the same thing. If you can show me a transcript proving the tax return was filed, then I'll contact our 4506T team and tell them to send another request for tax transcript. In other words, they'll use it, the loan representative, the loan special loan officer will use this to beat it over the head of the idiots in the 4506T team to say, mm-hmm. you idiots are sending the ball on 4506T because I got a transcript here. Yeah, The guy filed his taxes. He didn't commit fraud. Right. Okay. It's a real tax return. So can you morons in the, I mean, I know, you know, they don't talk to them like that. This is me. But can you folks in the 4506T team Request a new transcript. Yeah. That's why you will see the SBA coming and asking you for a transcript, but there's no way on God's green earth they're going to use your transcript to approve them. Right. And we did a video about that many months ago because you remember that whole debacle back in March, April, or May, <laughs> June. It came, came out of Reddit. Some moron on Reddit said, oh, just send in a stamp tax return. You'll get approved. Oh, that's the Send in your own transcripts. You'll get approved. I got it. It's just been the the drama of the nonsense that people are causing frantic behavior in people waiting. They, they're giving false hopes with these transcripts mm-hmm. and the stamped returns. It's my nap And then, oh, it, that the 4506T is going to go away. That was another one. That was awesome. Oh, you know, yeah. We, then, we know a certain YouTuber who will remain nameless, Jason, <laughs> um, who, who's a very angry man and who yells at people all the time. He, stop! Will you stop? Well, he was going on and on. He said, it's going to go away. And yeah. he was not the only one. Many other YouTubers were doing the same thing. The 4506 it's going to go away. It's so going to go away. When we have these dramas. Guess what? It didn't go away. So we, when the, we have these dramas that come up that people waste their time in trying to assess the accuracy or the validity of this. And then I'll do a 60-second. You're so second. nice. You mean the clickbait jokes. Yes. Yeah. So then I do a 60-second video. I did this one. The 45, we were here at the office. I did a 4506T not going away and I did it out in the hallway and some woman was like I don't know why you why do you have to insult us like this I'm Thanks, like Jamie what I insult you like okay go to therapy lady Who I don't said know this? some woman I of course she I, was on, she had her YouTube channel I blocked her she made a rude comment because she didn't like how I was saying that the 45060 is not going to go away oh Here yeah is, well, no, we we have our moments as some of you know that we will insult you out there in the audience <laughs> um, because you, y'all are, you know, listening to the wrong people, the clickbait people or the, you know, hot pockets in mommy's basement, two <laughs> o'clock on Reddit people <laughs> who are giving you all the wrong information, you know, and we do this for a living with over $30 million in approvals and we're both 30 year veteran financial services. Yeah. And, uh, and it's like professionals. And Cobb. We know how things really work. They ask for the same shit all the time. Listen, that's why this show was 10 things the SBA got wrong about COVID-19 EIDL program. They, they just, I mean, the fact that we had never even heard of EIDL and now we've had a business that we're closing down two in years two in. years. How does the SBA not have this shit figured out? All right. That's it. Okay. Oh, so are we still talking about the SBA mentioned that form too? She was using Google. Did she find out that it's a nuclear thermal warhead? <laughs> can you can you Google SP, SBA form CP fifty nine D CP fifty nine? Yeah, I, type in SBA. No, no, no SBA. SBA form CP fifty nine. I don't think. I think it's an IRS form. Yeah, this is an IRS form. It's a, which basically says that you didn't file your uh, right. What, what is this notice about? When you sent this? Yeah, it's telling you that you didn't file a tax return. Oh, by the way, this is what SBA does. They just they they pull it out of their ass. Yeah. 
They, That's it, why I say CP59. If you're still with us and you have been with us the whole time, I said this earlier. I am waiting for someone out there to post here and comment with something the SBA has gone right. Now, listen, the people whose loans have already been approved and they got approved and they didn't have to go back and get more money. Well, we actually we have know. lots of stories of things that SBA got right. You know, so there was the factory in North Carolina who finally got approved for five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, it was actually four hundred eighty two thousand dollars. And um, he was weeks away from closing the factory permanently. He said, I'm running on fumes. And if I don't get the money in the next two weeks, I'm out of business forever. Forever is a yeah, long time. Forever is a long time. And not long after that, we got a contact from a really awesome SBA loan officer on the appeals team. Now, in the case of this factory, they had minimal revenue in 2019 because the the business entity was only formed um, in the spring of 2019. And by the time the factory ramped up production and sold some product. It wasn't until the last three months of the year. So October, November, December. So had three months of revenue in 2019, one month of revenue in 2020 before the pandemic. And I kept fighting with the SBA saying to them, please read SBA form 1368. Please read my SBA form 3501, which explains to you what I just said about the factory opening at end of 2019. And we were very fortunate that we got the right loan officer. And she said to me on the phone, she said, okay, how was his revenue in 2020? And because we collect that mm -hmm. from our clients, we don't have to because the SBA doesn't use it, but we do it. It's what I call my toolkit. We collect a lot of stuff that goes into our documents toolkit that helps me as a loan officer be resilient and responsive. So I said to her, well, actually, you had a pretty good year. And I gave her the number. She said, okay. Email me the 2020 track tax return so I can see what that was. So I sent it over to her. She goes, great. Okay, so now she said, I can lend him $482,000 based on the 2020 tax return. I mm -hmm. said, great. She said, but I don't want to use the 2020 tax return. She said, because then I have to file a 4506T and I won't get the transcripts back. It's going to. She says, have him send me 12 months of bank statements. And so we. she used the bank statements to approve the loan. Mm -hmm. Folks, that is the exception Mm -hmm. to the rule at the SBA. Yes. You see, if you are fortunate enough to get a person like that. Actually, Edgar, don't leave yet, okay? So Edgar just, uh, he wrote way back, I'd have to scroll back, where he has multiple businesses, and Edgar said, if we get a great loan officer, can I use that loan officer no. for other businesses? And I said, no, no it's not. It doesn't work, it doesn't like, work that. like that. We don't get to pick and choose who it's they It's not like when you're buying a house and you, you're, you, get, you go to your mortgage company and the first loan officer is a schmuck and you hang up the phone, you call back and you get a different loan officer. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You don't get to select. But so Kia, well, let's go back to Kia right here where she says, I'm yeah. praying it's the 159D. Kia, here's the thing. You don't need a 159 You don't need, you know. 159D is for us. It's not for you. I to, but, I did write to her. You see where I wrote here? It's a third party authorization. Right. That's form. only if you hire a firm like ours to represent you in preparing the documents for an EIDL. And 159D only needs to be submitted if our fee exceeds the the statutory limits, which for a house for an EIDL is five hundred dollars, for a small business is two thousand five hundred dollars. And it says on the form. If the if the fee will exceed these limits, the consultant, the preparer, it's what's called an authorized preparer, must receive obtain permission from the SBA to charge more, and must document the reasons why they are charging more. So we made a strategic decision. We're not going to what? Well, I'm going to send this into the SBA on every client. We've got 500 clients. I'm going to send this in on every client, and then wait how many years for SBA's knucklehead incompetent morons to get back to me and say, okay, you can't charge $10,000. We'll allow you to charge $3,000. No. So we just said 2,500 because if it's 2,500, I don't have to have the form signed. I don't have to send, submit it. We have our own form, which we developed based upon feedback from the SBA. Plus on SBA form 3501, you can put down an authorized representative and or preparer and their fee on the form. Likewise, when you do an original EIDL application, if somebody's preparing that and submitting that for you, there's a box for them to put their information in, including the fee. 
But your case, Kia, if you're doing your own SBA EIDL process, you she don't hired, need 159. Well, she hired someone. Did you not see? I, I know you can see these comments. She said she hired a guy, but he, but the, his son d died in a in a crash. That's okay, so horrible. Kia, here I'm just going to tell you this as an old guy who's oh. been in the finance world since 1989. He's old. I'm old. Kia, if you hired somebody who doesn't even know what 159D is, that's a problem. Fire that person immediately. If they if you gave them money, get all your money back, every penny, because that person doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, does not know what they're doing. You yeah. will have a massive failure in your process. Yeah, well, his, his her ta it's her tax person, and he's grieving because he lost his son. So let's just move on. Um, all right. Well, this is the longest show we've ever done. So thanks for all of you who have hung in there with us and have. Trinity says Trinity wants to use. Yes, us. I I sent that, but I put the link in the ch in the chat so she can quote on that. Oh, sorry, click on that. Kia, I understand this, and I know Linda just said this about he's grieving. But here's the thing: this is business, and it's your life and your family and your livelihood that you've got to protect. And I understand how personal crises can affect us in the financial services industry mm -hmm. from assisting our clients. I've been there. Yes. And I know what that's like. But you as a business owner have to make a decision how you're going to protect your business. You know, we have a client here in Connecticut where we do independent consulting. It's a restaurant group. And we're having a challenge recently with a contractor oh. that he hired to build out one of his restaurants. And the contractors, mm. after finishing one of the restaurants, the, the contractor severed the relationship. We don't know why. But um, we have to get a document signed by this contractor, and it's been a nightmare. And I said to the client, I said, you know, you, you, you want to give this guy a shot because you like him and he's new, but he's a nightmare to work with. Yeah. Why, why are you giving yourself so much drama? you got to protect yourself. And, and and that's the advice that he pays us for, by the way. Yeah. And so he said, you know, you're right, Trevor, you're right. Um, so, Kia, I say the same thing to you. I uh, Believe me, I'm, I do feel sympathy for your tax person's loss, mm -hmm. but you as a business owner have to protect yourself yeah. and protect your livelihood. And if that person cannot serve you at this time, and the fact that they don't know what a 159D is, is well, very anyway, just troubling. Well, anyway, let's just move on, okay? She doesn't know if he doesn't know. Okay, so you don't know. Why, is, why you are don't you? Know but, if but, she knows, okay, he doesn't I'm, I'm, know. I'm going to go further to dump him no. over the side of the boat. Stop. Why are you calling the SBA if you hired somebody to do it for you? That's I true. I understand that. That is true too. So, all right, let's end on a positive note. I want all of you to comment on thanks, Willie, on all what you think the SBA is doing right because this show was about ten things that they've gotten wrong. I'd like to know what you think they're doing that is right because the stories we hear are legendary. Well, as Willie says, hang in there, everyone. Yeah. Stay positive. Listen, we've gotten over $30 million in approvals and as frustrated, I'm sorry, I'm adjusting myself here in my chair, as frustrated as I am as a loan officer, underwriter, processor for our client files, including you, Willie, we've sent in paperwork multiple times as frustrated as I am, and I have many moments throughout the day where I just want to hang it up and say, this is this is Groundhog Day, you know, yeah. in a Stephen King novel. At least in Groundhog Day, Bill Murray wakes up every day. He knows exactly what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. Right. And but I just, for me as a closer, I don't get enough positive results on our client files for me to be satisfied, here's even a, with $30 million. Here's another thing that we would love for you guys to do. To say thank you if we've helped you, if we've answered a question, it's also free. Can you please subscribe to our Simple Sense podcast channel? We're going to be recording videos, not just podcast, audio-only style videos on our uh, YouTube.com slash Aurora Consulting. It's our new channel because when we're done with the IDL, we will be exploring yeah, our new going enterprising. Whole, we're going a whole other direction. It has a lot to do with that right here over my shoulder. Right here. At, books. Oops. Where, yeah, books. Where, content. It's over here. At. Yeah. At, which is about content. So that's. All right. So, um, that was but yeah, please, I put the link in the chat. Can you just hit that subscribe button for our Simple Sense for Small Business? Key is asking for our email. Address. I know. And I, I did. I put it in the chat. Um, you might have to scroll up. I'm going to do it again for my email. This is my email, Kia, so I can figure out why you're not being able to buy that book because it should be on there with the link. 
Anywho, thank you all for being here. Beatrice, did I miss a question? I said they weren't able to do my return. Uh, says that there's... Okay, Beatrice, stop right now. Stop, stop, full stop, Beatrice, full stop. If you need a referral to an awesome CPA, we have two fantastic CPAs we can refer you to. Beatrice, hire a CPA. Yeah. You're in the realm of tax return nightmare realm. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I don't listen to what an SBA agent says I should file. And I'm not sure that I really trust the IRS to tell me the right turn, return to file. By the way, when this happened just a few days ago, and we have a client that we referred from his CPA to one of our CPAs. I was on the phone with that CPA yesterday, who actually happens to be our personal and professional mm -hmm. CPA and a really good friend of mine, and he plays in my band. Mm -hmm. um, and he said to me, you know, he says, the IRS doesn't always know the right form to file. <gasps> Beatrice, hire a certified public accountant, yes. a CPA. They have a license to give you an opinion. They have a license to argue with the, the IRS. IRS on your behalf, and they know the correct form to file. It is time for you at your business level, Beatrice. If you're at that stage, talking about 1065s and stuff, you need to spend the money and hire a yes. competent professional. And you need to watch... Our, or listen to Simple Sense. The Simple Sense video we did. Is your CPA hindering you or helping you? Okay. Um, there, I, I'm going to have to find that. I just put in the chat. <laughs> Kia, you're hysterical. I, I just want to send the SBA every damn form that exists. Yeah. I just, uh, so this oh, is. Is it darned? She wrote darned. darned. So you this know, is. Kia, the, you don't have to not curse on our half. We don't give a shit. Oh, I dropped the F bomb today, folks. Yeah. So, you know, it was a. It had to happen. So, Beatrice, I'm putting in the the link to our podcast channel, Aurora Consulting. You're going to want to go in there, and there's a playlist called Managing Finances or something like that. And there's a video in that about hiring a CPA. You need to listen to that. And you need to – this is like we're putting up our – we're putting on our, our big girl oh, pants. Oh, a dude. I'm a dude. Oh. Sorry, Kia. <laughs> Sorry, Kia. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, <laughs> by the way, I just want to point out to all of you. You see this this wonderful hey, guy. Hey, Michael. This is this is my gal right here. Mm -hmm. Michael comes out the perfect time, just as I'm cuddling Linda. And we're and we're this signing is, off. She's the love of my life, and she's my partner in business and life and everything. Although she is not allowed to sing in the band at all. In <laughs> fact, very often, if I'm cooking dinner in the kitchen, she comes oh, in. Michael, did starts, that hurt your ears? Did that hurt your ears? Stop with the ASMR <laughs> nonsense. If she comes into the kitchen while I'm cooking and tries singing along with that Tom Petty song that I'm grooving to, I tell her, stop that. Mm. Otherwise, she is amazing. Her name is Linda Ray. Isn't she adorable? I bought her this hat from Etsy for Christmas. I picked it out. <laughs> well, I bought it. <laughs> We want to thank all of you for joining us today. Beatrice came back. What did she say? Um, she has said, processed both returns. I amended. Uh, again, I'm going to say this to you. Um, oh, man. Oof. I amended. Oh, wow. So you sent in an 1120. That, well, that's, I amended 1065 okay, so, and sent in 1120 with a new. Okay. They are still requesting 1065. How do I change that? Kia thinks there's good money in ASMR, by the way. There is. I'm sure Willie, there is. Willie, we thank you. Willie, you know we got you back. We're working, trying to get you this money. Um, yeah, we Denisha, are. in my case, they did nothing right so far. That's just my opinion. Yep. You are in a world of uh, agreement with us, yes. Denisha. Yes. Michael, Writer Sanctuary, I'm waiting for you to ask me about credit reports. Hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. I know. Thanks, Chad. Michael, we're, you we're haven't better. asked. Michael has not asked credit? us if you're going to run your credit. Well. If you do it, Michael, I will throw this microphone <laughs> right through the screen. <laughs> okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a history. Michael's been a, a fan for a long time and uh, not a client. And he um, he often, he's a funny guy. He has his own YouTube channel. Yes, Writer Linda. Sanctuary. Writer he's Sanctuary. a writer. He's a freelance writer. He talks about all things about writing. 
and um, how to write, what to write, what to use when you're writing, different tools and resources about writing. So he writes. And he's been on the show a lot. Yes, and I'm he, right. That he often right. comes in with it like the obvious jokes. Like he, he, Michael jumps on the whole Reddit bandwagon to make me crazy. Oh, like yeah. he'll come into the show and say, hey, I have a question. I went Does the write. SBA run your credit report? <laughs> like, ah! You know, or I heard this on Reddit. Is it true? Like, he just does it to muck with me. Uh, um, yeah, we're making you blush, Michael. I love okay. you, Michael. Even though sometimes I want to slap you into the next century, but that's only out of a very friendly way <laughs> because my slaps actually hurt a lot. Um, <laughs> All right. Said, so we are feeling better. I am very amazed I have not coughed once during the show. Linda and I have been sick with COVID since December 23rd. December 23rd. Oh, wait, wait been functional in the last week but two weeks it was brutal well it was that for me i had covid in the summer of 2020 we still worked oh my gosh yeah i was it's definitely a much milder version um we had somebody argue with us two days ago that we had the flu and i was like <laughs> listen pal i know the difference between the flu and covid this was covid it's not the flu so All we, right. we're hearing from a lot of you from our clients that many of you are also it's ill. So we'll open the best for we're going to be you. two hours. So let's let's close it out. Kia, Reddit on Red Dead. Okay, <laughs> Kia, you and Michael, you guys can have a private chat about how to mess with Trevor on the next show. And I expect both of you to come back with a good script of some funny stuff that will make me crack up. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you uh, so much. Kia, who's a guy. Don't Denisha, who is a strong opinion. And all of you wonderful clients, Chad and Willie and Kathy Lee and uh, Erica and Jamie and Adam and Doug. Um, Kareem was here. Kareem Antoine was and here Antoine, today. Yeah. Edgar was here. We thank all of you. You know, we have over 500 clients. I like to believe that I have a pretty good understanding of who each one of our clients are. Yes. Um, it's just Everyone, about who, the ones that come business. on our show, we really love. There are a couple that I want to like to really, uh, 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 uh. but for the most part, Kia, watch your Reddit. Ninety nine point five percent of our clients are awesome. But again, we ask you all if you would take a moment to subscribe. Subscribe either to this channel, hit the bell, and ding ding ding, and please go to our Aurora Consulting channel. We now we're going to close out this show and we're going to record our next video that uh, comes. We, we, we drop might. every I'm, Monday. I'm kind of feeling running, I know. I'm running I know, low on too. juice and it's 430 in the afternoon here in oh. Connecticut. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're in New England where it was three, three degrees. degrees the other night. We turned on all the faucets in our house, oh. little drip, drip, drip. So our pipes don't freeze. Um, it was quite frigid. Um, and, but we went out. Tuesday for the first time after being sick. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> You're awesome, you Adam. are awesome, Adam. You are. We love you, man. <laughs> um, and we went out grocery shopping. You know, in our town, we have to take our own trash to the <laughs> transfer station. <laughs> and uh, we went out, and it was rather, it was quite cold. It was like 13 degrees when we were out, but we're New Englanders. We're kind of used to it. And I had my thermals on and my, my Roxbury hat, and Linda had her cute Etsy Christmas present hat on. Yeah. And we got a lot of groceries. Okay. We hadn't been out of the house in Nobody cares about month. our groceries. So I'm just killing time over here until, now, yeah. until uh, Michael and Kia come back with some more nonsense. <laughs> well, I love this. Watch your reticate. Love it. Love, Kia, so much nicer love, in California. Love. I love California. All Except right, for folks. earthquakes. Not, not so All right. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Be Thanks, well. Stay be safe, prosperous. Be, well. be hopeful. Be we'll positive. We'll see you on Simple Sense for small business. Make sure you jump over there and have a listen to our podcast. Ciao for now.